Hi, Simon Kid subscribers. My name is Sarah Durand, and I collaborated with Walter Isaacson on the Young Readers edition of his number one New York Times bestseller, The Code Breaker. Um, this wonderful, inspiring book is the story of Jennifer Dudna, who is an American biochemist who over decades of study helped determine the structure of RNA. Now, for those who don't know, uh, RNA is short for ribonucleic acid, and it is a molecule that's very similar to DNA. This is RNA, this is DNA, except that RNA gives DNA the instructions that allow it to express its genetic material. So therefore, if you have blue eyes, or you're very tall, or you have very, have very long fingers, or brown skin, just like your mom or your dad, that's because their RNA and your RNA have told your DNA what to tell you to become and what to look like. Um, very recently, Jennifer Duden's discoveries led her and her scientific collaborators to discover a revolutionary way to edit genes, and this is called CRISPR. Today, CRISPR and similar genetic technologies are, using to are being used to diagnose and treat genetic conditions um, such as sickle cell anemia and Tay-Sachs disease. And then only in the last few years, Jennifer's research and her collaborators' research to help diagnose, test, treat, and create vaccines for the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. The Code Breaker is an extraordinary story. It's full of science with a race to discover the means uh, for genetics and the race to end a deadly pandemic. But at its heart and its soul, it's the story of a brave, inspiring, intelligent woman who broke down barriers in her field and ultimately won the Nobel Prize in science for her efforts. This book is absolutely perfect for anyone who's interested in the STEAM field, anyone who wants to become a researcher, a scientist, a doctor, an engineer, and more. It's a terrific, interesting story, a detective story, and it's a fascinating a portrait of a modern day person who's unlike any other. I hope you have a chance to read it. But in the meantime, I'm pleased to read the first chapter of The Code Breaker titled Hilo. If she had grown up in any other part of America, Jennifer Dudna might have felt like a regular kid. But in Hilo, an old town in a volcano-filled region on Hawaii's big island, the fact that she was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, and lanky made her feel like a complete freak. Her classmates called her a haole, a negative term for people who weren't native Hawaiians. Feeling so different caused her beco to become skeptical of others and careful about the situations she chose to get herself into, even though later in life, she became very friendly and open to new experiences. Her family often told Dudna and her sister stories about their ancestors. One of the more popular tales involved one of Dudna's great grandmothers, who was part of a family of three brothers and three sisters. The parents could not afford for all six children to go to school, so they decided to send the three girls. One daughter became a teacher in, Man in Montana and kept a diary that has been handed down over the generations. Its pages were filled with tales of determination, hard work, and long hours in the family store and other frontier pursuits. She was crusty and stubborn and had a pioneering spirit, said Dudna's sister, Sarah, who now has the diary. In fact, she was a little like her great granddaughter, Jennifer Dudna. Dudna was also one of three sisters, although there were no brothers. As the oldest, she was spoiled by her father, Martin Dudna, who sometimes referred to his children as Jennifer and the girls. She was born February 19th, 1964 in Washington, D.C., where her father worked as a speechwriter for the Department of Defense. More than anything else, he wanted to be a professor of American literature, so he moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan with his wife, a community college teacher named Dorothy, and enrolled at the University of Michigan. 
When he earned his PhD, Martin applied for 50 jobs and only got one offer from the University of Hawaii at Hilo. He borrowed $900 from his wife and moved his family there in August 1971 when Dudna was seven. That's when Dudna began to feel alone and isolated, especially at school. In the third grade, she was so unloved by her classmates that she had trouble eating, and she developed all sorts of digestive problems that she later realized were stress-related. Kids teased her every day, especially the boys, because unlike them, she had hair on her arms. To protect herself, she escaped into books and developed a defensive layer. There's an internal part of me they'll never touch, she told herself. Many creative people, including Leonardo da Vinci, Albert Einstein, Oprah Winfrey, and Malala Yousafzai, grew up feeling slightly alienated from their surroundings. Like them, Dudna started to become curious about where human beings belong in the universe. Digging deep and reading everything she could get her hands on, Dudna tried to figure out who she was in the world and how she got here. Fortunately, this loneliness did not last forever. Life began to get better halfway through third grade when her family moved from the heart of Hilo to a new development of houses that had been carved into the forested slope on the edge of the Mauna Loa volcano. She switched from a large school with 60 kids per grade to a smaller one with 20. There they studied U.S. history, a subject that made her feel more connected to her roots and less like an outsider. It was a turning point, she recalled. Dudna thrived so much that by the time she was in fifth grade, her math and science teacher urged her to skip a grade. Her parents agreed and moved her into sixth grade. And that year, she finally made a close friend, a girl with whom she has kept in close contact her whole life. Lisa Hinckley, now Lisa Twig Smith, was from a classic mixed race Hawaiian family part Scottish, Danish, Chinese, and Polynesian. She knew how to handle the bullies. When someone would call me a howley, I would cringe, Dudna recalled, but when a bully called Lisa names, she would turn and look right at him and give it right back to him. I decided I wanted to be that way. One day in class, the students were asked what they wanted to be when they grew up. Lisa proclaimed that she wanted to be a skydiver. Dudna thought that was so cool. Lisa was bold in a way Dudna never had been. So Dudna taught herself she needed, told herself she needed to learn to be brave and soon she started to be. Dudna and Lisa spent their afternoons riding bikes and hiking through sugarcane fields where biology was lush and diverse with moss and mushrooms, peach and palms. They found meadows filled with lava rocks covered in ferns, and in the lava flow caves, there lived a species of spiders with no eyes. Dudna wondered, how did this spider come to be? She was also intrigued by a thorny vine called sleeping grass because its fern-like leaves curled up when they were touched. We all see the wonders of every day, whether it be a plant that moves or a sunset that reaches its pink fingers, finger rays into a sky of deep blue. The key to true curiosity is pausing to think about the causes. What makes a sky blue or a sunset pink or a leaf of sleeping grass curl? Dudna was curious about all those things and more, and she soon found someone who could help her answer such questions. Her parents were friends with a biology professor named Don Hemis, and he and Dudna's family loved to go on nature walks together. They especially liked hunt hunting for mushrooms. Mm -hmm. After photographing the fungi, the professor would pull out his reference books and show Dudna how to, to identify them. He also collected microscopic shells from the beach, and he would work with her to categorize them so they could figure out how they evolved. Dudna's exploration also continued at home. Her father bought her a horse, a chestnut male named Mokahana after a Hawaiian tree with a fragrant fruit. She joined the soccer team playing halfback, a position that had been hard to fill because it required a runner with long legs and lots of stamina. At school, math was her favorite class because it felt like detective work. 
Although she was doing well academically, she did not feel the teachers at her small school on the outskirts of Hilo expected much of her. She had an interesting response to that though. The lack of challenges made her feel free to take more chances. I decided you just have to go for it, she recalled. It made me willing to take on risks, which is something I did later in science when I chose projects to pursue. Her father was the one person who really pushed her. He saw his oldest daughter as his soulmate in the family, the intellectual who was bound for college in an academic career like him. Dudna felt like she, like she was the son he'd always wanted to have, and that was why he treated her a bit differently than he treated her sisters. Dudna's father was a huge reader who would check out a stack of books from the local library each Saturday and finish them by the following weekend. Often he would bring home a book for Dudna to read. And that is how a paperback copy of James D. Watson's The Double Helix ended up on her bed one day when she was in sixth grade and was waiting for her when she got home from school. And there it continues. Jennifer Dudna reads The Double Helix and the rest is history. Thank you so much for your time, Simon Kids subscribers. Again, my name is Sarah Durand, and I hope you enjoy The Codebreaker. Breaker.